In this video I'll be showing you which cassette sizes and ranges can be used for which Shimano 11 speed setups so effectively which group sets and which rear derailleur cage sizes. I'll be using this trustworthy aluminium race bike here for some demonstrations and also showing you the allowed ranges given by Shimano and compare the different um, generations and cage lengths and also be explaining why Shimano chooses to limit the ranges the way they do and if and how you can go outside of these recommended ranges. Now the, the common misconception about the rear derailleur is what maximum is the question of what maximum largest um, cog you can use on the back whereas that is actually not that relevant um, compared to the capacity of the rear derailleur and I'll explain that shortly. So the rear derailleur is special on the bike because it actually does two things independently which are related but there's still two things whereas the front derailleur only does one thing it's kind of obvious it just pushes the chain from one chain ring to the other and that's all it does whereas the rear derailleur does two things it actually does the shifting by the movement of this part it moves in and out and it also compensates for chain length with these two pulleys here on the cage with a spring and this is actually independent it's related but not directly linked to the shifting. So it actually does two things separately. And both of these need to be treated separately when looking at the possible ranges and cassette sizes that can be used. One is the largest sprocket and the other is the capacity. Now a big um, unknown or not a Many people don't really understand what's meant by the capacity and I'll explain this briefly. So here I'm using, this is actually not the Shimano cassette, this is a Sunrays cassette. I'm having an 11 to 32 cassette here and on the front I'm actually, this is also not a Shimano crank as you can see, a rotor crank using SRAM chain rings but they are completely compatible with the Shimano chain rings and what I have here you can see it here we have 50 to 34 50 on the large ring 34 on the small ring here I'm showing you how to calculate the range of your setup separately for the rear and front first and then we add them two together so I'm using a 11 to 32 cassette at the rear and a 50 to 34 chain ring set about the front. Now the range is calculated individually by subtracting the smaller number from the bigger one. So in this case it's 32 minus 11 which equals 21. So the range of my rear cassette is 21. The same for the front. We have 50 minus 34 equals 16. Now the total range, as I wrote here, is the front range plus the rear range. So it's 21 plus 16, which equals 37. So this is the total range of my setup. Now, the total capacity is a limit given by Shimano for the rear derailleur. should now be bigger than the actual range that we are using, or the range should be smaller than the total capacity. So now let's compare this to what the Shimano recommendations are for the different group sets. So I made a big list here. You might want to pause the video to see all values. And I'll explain briefly what we see here. First of all, we are, I separate here between the older generation so the 105 5800 will take 6800 and you raise 9000 group sets also 11 speed and the current generation 105 r7000 will take r8000 and you raise r 9100 i'm also showing the di2 now for all of these there are two 
cage lengths available for the rear derailleur. So basically what that is, is a different length here. So the one will be longer and have a longer cage length. Now, the names might be a bit misleading. The short cage length is called SS and the medium cage length is called GS. And there is no long cage length. At least not for these road derailers. Now the total capacity is the maximum range or uh, that the maximum difference in chain length which the rear derailleur can take up. And the longer cage will be able to pick up more slack chain than the short derailleur because it can swing by swinging the same angle it does more distance. Now here we have for the system which which is saw on my back, which is actually the Ultegra 6800 short cage, the total capacity recommendation is 33 and with a maximum low, lowest sprocket of 28, low meaning light gear. And in order to use the setup that I'm using, if I show you here again, I have a total range of 37 and a maximum rear sprocket of 32. Shimano recommends me to use the medium cage 37 and 32. Now we have some more values here. This is the minimum low sprocket that you can use. And here it's a 23. So you could have an 11 to 23 cassette up to a 11 to 28. Here you can't go such low now this is confusing. Such low lowest gears, you would have to go minimum a twenty eight on the lowest gear, and then that we have the maximum front capacity, which is always sixteen for all group sets we are looking at here. So and as I showed you here, the, my front range is the maximum fifty minus thirty four is sixteen. This is the compact chain rings. If I do the, the standard, you can't see that. Standard chain ring size would be a 53 on the big one and a 39. So that's only a range of 14. So you're with the standard you're actually not using the maximum range given by the system. That's fine of course. Then we have the, this is by the way, this is all the Shimano terminology in top sprocket max so this is the the biggest hardest gear you could have so the biggest ring which is a 14 and the minimum an 11 whereas here for the medium size case you can go only go to a 12 i'm not sure who would use a 14 here but these are the values given by shimano they're not so relevant for what we're looking at now and i also put down the weights for all of these rear derailers and the price as of March 2019 and I just checked them on Bike24 which is my go-to online bike shop or part shop. Now okay so we already compared these values now if we go to the current generation we see that they went up a bit from 33 to 35 for the short cage and for the medium cage from 37 to 39. The same for the maximum sprocket from 28 to 30 for the short cage and from 32 to 34 for the medium cage. It's worth noting that there is no Dura-Ace medium cage, neither for the older generation nor for the current generation. I don't know why that is, but that's just the way it is. And then I also have put down the DI2 the electronic group sets, whereas all the others are the mechanical versions. And this is more or less the same. So for the Ultegra, um, it's the R8050. The short cage has 37. Mm, this must be wrong. This must be a mistake on my on my list here. This can't be 37, this must be 35. So a small error here, sorry about this. And Ultegra are 8050, 35 on the short cage and 39 on the medium cage, just as 
for the mechanical systems. The only noteworthy difference is that the Dura Ace short cage only goes to 33, the capacity of 33. So smaller than the Dura Ace mechanical, which would have the capacity of 35. I don't know why this is. I double check this value. It is correct, not like this one, which wasn't. And the rest are the same. It's just the capacity, which is limited to 33. And again, here for the DA2, there is no medium cage durace. So that's this explained. Now, what happens if you go outside of these recommendations like I did? I'm here, I have a recommended capacity of 33. I'm using 37. I have a recommended lowest sprocket maximum of 28. I'm using 32. Let me show what happens. So one thing is, can the, the shifting actually reach this, this big sprocket here? And obviously, yes, it can. It can, it, it can do it without problems. In order to reach such a maximum position, you need to... Oh, sorry about this. You need to, here, turn the B-screw right in. What I did is actually I flipped the B-screw, so I put it in from the other side. This helps. So what this B-screw does is it pretensions the spring, which turns this back. And by turning it back, let me get a better angle, you get more distance from the max, the sprocket to the, the top pulley. And it's just about fits for the 32. I wouldn't recommend using a 34. Now that's the, the biggest sprocket. And now the capacity. The capacity is, of course, um, the other limitating factor. And let me show you briefly what it means. So and how you need to set up such a system. So the chain length is, of course, critical. And I'll switch into the big and big rings. So big one at the back, which you already have, and big one at the front, which doesn't want to come up. Great. Uh, sorry about this. Mm. So I actually have to shift down here to get it to go. I don't experience this, experience this when riding on the road. But anyway, now we have what I wanted to show you. So now big ring at the front, big ring on the back. And here I, I set up the chain length so that this really maxes out the cage in its in its range. So I couldn't go one uh, chain link shorter. This is the maximum. So it has to, the setup needs to be able to do this configuration because even if you might say to yourself, well, I'm never going to ride in this gear so I can set it up with an even shorter chain. Um, you never know what's going to happen and one day you might just forget about it in the heat of the moment, in a race or whatever. It's just going to shift without knowing in which gear you're in and you just might go into this gear. So if the chain is too short and you shift into this gear, so if I had it even shorter than this, you would just rip off the rear derailleur because it, it, it can't compensate it for this chain length. Now, so the way I have it here is okay. I'm not going to really planning on riding in this gear anyway, at least not for longer times because of the cross training effect. But if I ever do, it's okay. It'll work. Nothing will break. And I can then shift into a different gear later. Now I'm going to um, shift into the two smallest rings. This should work better this time. A bit more downshift at the back. So here we are. Now we have the small chain ring and the smallest pocket at the back. And here you can see the rear derailleur has folded completely from the completely extended position into the completely folded back. And this is the maximum range it can do. So it can go from this completely extended position to this. And obviously a longer cage can pull on more chain because it has a longer swing length. Now here, this gear might also not be perfect because the chain is actually rubbing, even if only so slightly here, 
on the on itself basically where it goes over the top pulley now is this ideal yes and no i mean i understand why shimano does not recommend this position because they want to sell a perfectly working system which doesn't rub anywhere that's just what they want to do if you buy a bike which is set up like this out of the box you might think okay this is not very good engineering because even though nothing drastic happens it's just not the perfect setup so they will say okay what we want to do is we want to make and sell perfect setups which should work in all gears without rubbing and here in this one gear it doesn't work now this is fine for me personally this is my choice because as with the big big ring setup i don't really want to use this gear because of the cross chaining but if i ever do nothing is going to happen it's just going to rub a bit i'm going to hear it and i can then i'll notice that i'm in this gear and I'll, I'll shift to a different gear and even if i stay in this gear for a couple of minutes nothing nothing wears or nothing is damaged so i'm i'm happy with the setup i've been using it for probably i don't know two three thousand kilometers and it works perfectly for me if you don't like this then that's no problem, you can just get a, a new derailleur with a long cage. Um, the prices are reasonable and Durace is not relevant because there is no long cage for Durace anyway. So you don't need to worry about Durace prices, we're only talking 105 or Tegra prices. And if you feel you need a bigger cassette which puts your system out of its capacity, you're buying a new cassette, you're buying a new chain probably, then just buy a new rear derailleur as well. The 105, let's go down to this list again, the current generation 105, medium cage is 42 euros, which is about the same price as a, as a cassette and Ultegra, well, maybe even less than the cassette. So, my recommendation is, yes, you can go outside of the, out of the limitations, but not an awful lot, so I wouldn't go a 34. Or bigger here so I think this is sort of the maximum that that can be reached and you sort of need to know what you do especially when setting up the chain lengths you really want to make sure that you can do the maximum the two big rings with maximum compensation maximum tension here without without actually breaking the breaking off the rear derailleur I know this has happened to people so this is the summary do what you either what you feel best with if you feel this is not a good system then you need to go to the medium cage i don't think it's necessary not for this setup at least and it'll be a bit easier on the on the newer generation because they already allow for <coughs> a higher capacity as mine so it's already given with 35 and allows a maximum rear sprocket of 30 so here using a 32 11 setup i would have no problems with and for the 34 you might want to switch then to the medium cage